And uh, thank you, and, and again, welcome all to, uh, to our local, to, uh, to Heineken. Thank you all for being here. I'm Tony Costello, the Global Head of uh, Consumer Market Insights, and this is... Uh, and I am Lalo Luna, part of uh, the same team of Strategic Insights. Yeah, and uh, Lalo, I, I often ex uh, explain him as our AI expert, but as you can see, he is actually real. He's a real person who's an expert in, in AI, not an AI expert. You'll see one of our AI experts later. Um, always good to clarify. Um, and we called this presentation Building the Plane as We Fly, it's something I think everybody's experiencing. Right? This is moving so quickly that everyone's desperate to say, give us AI solutions, we need to be developing this, and it needs to work, and we're flying along, and yet the plane still hasn't been built. Um, so we tried to, to, to bring together for you some of the, what we're doing in this space from a client perspective. Uh, to help our teams to develop commercial propositions using AI uh, and, and uh, some of the experiments, but also some of the failures and learnings that we've had along the way so far. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, but Heineken, we have many, many over, over 400 brands. I've uh, been around for 150 odd years, um, but moving with the times, which is why we're, we're very rapidly getting into, into AI. And as we were um, thinking about how to, to present this, uh, and I think this was also a suggestion from AI around how we, because we wrote the, the title, because uh, SMR were saying, we need the title, we need the title. So we gave the title and then we developed the presentation. So we had to backfit all of our great ideas into, a, uh, uh, into this analogy. Uh, and uh, AI helped us um, to think of it in, in these kind of steps as you think about the, uh, how you might stay airborne in a, in a plane that isn't fully fully built. I think we all recognize this first stage, the, the thrill of takeoff, the excitement of, wow, this is an amazing technology that's going to completely change everything we do. We all got that. We all saw that. We were like jumping in with, with two feet. But very often, the next phase is what we call the, the three Fs. Uh, so not six Rs, three Fs, fuck, 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 or <laughs> finding the fatal flaws um, of, uh, of quality of uh, privacy, of bias, all the things that everyone's already been talking about all morning, we all saw them as well and said, this isn't going to work, this, this plane's going to fall out of the sky and we're all going to lose our jobs and, and the business is going to collapse after 150 years because we've made a, a big mess of this. So then it, it gets, how do we get around those? How do we use and leverage this fantastic technology without falling foul of those uh, fatal flaws? And the way we've looked at it is, is going into three key phases, which I'll talk through uh, very briefly, and we'll give you some examples. The first, um, which we call the mid-air calibration, is the bringing in experts. So it's buying, is looking at what are some of the early solutions that are developing out there and experimenting with them. And we'll show you how we're doing that, but trying to do it in a safe way that doesn't get us into, into severe trouble where we are going to suddenly lose our jobs or, or send the company under. Um, the next phase then goes into, into more partnership approach, uh, and we've started doing that in some areas, and we'll give an example again, where we're trying to get a bit more stability in the air um, and working together with some key partners on some key tools where it's still primarily their technology, but we're helping to evolve and really help make sure that it fits our needs as a, as a key client um, rather than just a bespoke off-the-shelf off the tool. And then, as you might have guessed, the final step is then really taking off and, and truly developing um, bespoke tools that are uh, specific to, a, uh, to our company needs. Um, and we're beginning to start thinking about what those might be uh, and what we might want to build ourselves rather than uh, work together with, uh, with partners. But Lalo, I'll pass over to you to start talking about the AI experiment. Yeah. Um, of course, all these AI topics are very trending right now, and everybody is starting to use OpenAI, but at the end, we were really trying to create some excitement of, uh, within the Heineken global teams to really help them to, to understand how they can use generative AI in the commercial processes that we have. So we are part of a very big team. You know, we are together insights, innovation, and design. Everybody are part of a very, very big team. So. We had a very nice offsite some weeks ago in Rotterdam, and one of the activities of this offsite was to create some excitement, to build curiosity of these AI stuffs, 
using something that is close to our business. So we, we gave a very, very simple, very clear brief to our teams. They needed to create some product concepts using AI tools. So we provided them with the correct tools. Um, of course, we were working on specific things that are related to the business, nothing confidential, but uh, we were working on uh, the two big demand spaces that we have uh, and that we are following in terms of innovation and everything. And uh, we follow a very, very simple process. We equip them with the correct tools, so we provide them access to some of the tools that we are using or we are piloting to create these concepts. Uh, as part of the concept uh, creation, um, they needed to create not only the proposition, but also a product packaging image, a mood board, or something using AI. Um, of course, we provided some, some information from the beginning about the demand spaces, what kind of things they can use you know, to, to craft the prompts and everything. During the session, they created nine different propositions. Then, of course, we tested these propositions uh, using our global platform, and then, no, and at that point, let's say the, the, the upside end, but then we continue this experimentation process, and we refine these concept testing. We refine these propositions using AI again. And of course, we learn. As part of the process, of course, it's the, it was about creating excitement, it was about creating curiosity about these kind of things, but also was about to have fun, you know, to, to be together, and to create a safe environment for these people. It's very important to, to create this very safe environment so they can really learn, they can really reapply what they are learning. So uh, starting with the experiment, of course, we equip them with the correct tools. So we provide them access to uh, ChatGPT, just to let you know, everybody in the Heineken company can get access uh, to ChatGPT using uh, an interface uh, to prevent any kind of confidentiality risk and, and everything, right? Uh, we use Midjourney, for example, and we work with other partners that help us in this process um, to digest data, um, I don't know, to, for the pre-testing process, and also for the validation of images no, during the the offsite. We ended with these nine, nine different concepts. Um, and we use um, different kind of tools, as I mentioned, and we had different kind of approaches within the teams because as we were a very big, let's say, team that were not only filled by insiders, uh, we had people from innovation, people from design working together, not all of them followed the same approach. So we had some concepts that were first, for example, written uh, by a common human, but we have other concepts that were created you know, from the beginning using AI. So we had a mix of, uh, let's say, propositions here, and then we tested. Part of the refining process, and we're going to see uh, the results in a, in a minute, but part of the refining process as we have the results, the outcomes of this uh, testing process was to use the consumer feedback. No, the verbatims, positives and negatives of each of these experiments. So we tested with real consumers and we took all these outcomes. Um, important, for the refinement process, we only use uh, the, ver the verbatims from the US, but we tested in the US and the UK. And I forgot to mention, the, the first testing process we did it um, at the same time in US, Singapore, South Africa, uh, and the UK. No, but for the refinement, we decided to go only for the US and the, and the UK using US verbal teams. We didn't, of course, blow, uh, update the, the names of the concepts, the images, or any other stimuli, trying to really understand if we can have, uh, I don't know, better results on the proposition. And what happened? Ah, sorry. Um, we follow a very, a very, very simple uh, three steps process, right? We extracted the consumer feedback, we infused all this feedback into ChatGPT again, but also we strengthen uh, the proposition. We provide the machine the correct information of the demand spaces, of specific things that needs to be um, part of the, of the propositions, uh, part of the language that we were looking, no? because we were, for example, looking for solutions for gen setters. Um, and of course, we improved the prompts. No? This enhancement process was extremely important for the experiment. <laughs> There it is. The results were amazing. Uh, we were able to, to really have very improved scores in most of the important metrics, of course. Behavior change, uh, believability, uniqueness, 
everything was amazing, to be fair. So we were really surprised about these, these outcomes. However, no, as I mentioned, we only tested this in the US and in the UK, but we use US uh, verbatims. But what happened in the UK? What happened is that the concepts didn't have no, the same results. We didn't have success there. And we identified some bias from GPT in this process. Of course, when we're talking about generative AI, there is some communication strengths that we need to consider. You know that the, the algorithm tries always to find a way to communicate or to strengthen the communication way, the, the proposition, but not necessarily to robust the proposition from the foundation. So it's, it's very clear. If we are talking about the US, you no, know, this was a very broad exploration, but also within the US, we have different kind of communities that can have different, um, I don't know, styles in the communication. Uh, we have different minorities, we have different kind of things. And that was happening in the UK. Um, ChatGPT enhanced the concepts uh, to the US language. Even when the, when the verbatims, teams, no, when, when the, let's say, the, the opportunity areas were very similar, we were not able uh, to enhance the propositions in the UK. So this was part of the first learnings. And then, um, well, we next step is to continue testing and maybe using synthetic, synthetic sample or things like that. But uh, as we were talking, um, AI, uh, or when we are talking about generative AI, it's always about tools. But I think that the first point is how we can take advantage of how we can leverage on our own data, on our own knowledge that we have as a company. So we are partnering with a specific vendors no, to help us in this case. In this case, we are working with Stravito, and we are creating a very, very strong knowledge management system that now is powered by AI. So we want to show you- Hi, I'm Kim, your virtual knowledge and insight management assistant. When you need insights, just ask Kim. Here's a demonstration of what I can do today. I understand you'd like to know about health and well-being, especially with relation to Gen Z and Asian consumers. Consumers are becoming more holistic in their approach to well-being, recognizing that it encompasses not just physical health, but also emotional, social and environmental factors. This trend is particularly pronounced among Gen Z consumers who prioritize mental health and social connections as key components of well-being. Asian consumers are increasingly interested in products and services that promote well-being, with a particular focus on traditional remedies and natural ingredients. This trend is driven in part by a desire to reconnect with cultural heritage and traditional practices, as well as a growing awareness of the potential risks associated with Western-style diets and lifestyles. I have also created a scrapbook for you with highlights from the key documents I've referred to in creating this short summary. Then, for any knowledge gaps that might exist, there is a suite of agile and AI-powered tools that can enable everybody to ensure the consumer voice is integrated into all our innovation and comms development. The dream is that Heineken becomes a truly consumer-centric company that the knowledge we have is an asset, a competitive advantage, and that it's available for all. Then, we will have democratized insight, and we will all get smarter together. Okay, and so that's a real live example uh, taken. At the moment, we don't have Kim, a, a, real, a real Kim person who, who uh, narrates it for them. Um, that's that we expect to be coming in the future because, to be honest, there's such a huge difference. And by the way, I should also say we didn't have specific insight. We hadn't done health and well-being in APAC amongst Gen Z, but it was able to generate learnings that are more true than not um, uh, and really helpful. But that ability for, for a, a marketing or an innovation person who is not going to trawl the reality, much like we'd love them to, to go through all the research we have and find these insights themselves, they're not going to. Being able to type a question in human language and get a real response based on what we know as a company is a, you know, is a game changer for us, right? Uh, so phenomenal um, and truly democratizing insight, as we say. Um, 
very quickly, final point is, and this is looking ahead to as we're thinking about building for the future. Um, and we've uh, we've already agreed it was going to be now, but we've moved it back to Q1 because of uh, uh, organisational changes. But we're going to run a hackathon. Uh, building some specific use cases uh, with our uh, across commerce, uh, marketing, sales, uh, activation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and start building some use cases uh, together with uh, our technology partners like Microsoft um, to start building those out. Which it sounds like some of uh, the client, uh, the agency companies are doing, but we're, we're doing that as well internally. Um, so very happy to come back and talk about that in the future. Very final slide, some key learnings, and again, pretty similar, I think, to what you've been hearing all morning long. So um, AI is revolutionary. It is exciting. It is going to change everything. It is faster and cheaper. It can be better. The question mark is there because of the three Fs that everyone's also been talking about. Uh, and I won't repeat, but I'll say the, the, the fix the fatal flaws, those three Fs. Um, that until we can address those, then it's, it's not better. It has the, it, there are huge risks attached. But that said, and again, echoing what a lot of people have said, we've just got to start doing this. But in order to do that, we need to start now, but we need to create those safe spaces, um, as we did with that experiment, where it, was, it, we didn't, it didn't matter if it was not private. Um, the whole company's uh, future was not dependent on it. It was a relatively safe space where we could learn what works, what doesn't, understand how, what the caveats are, so that when we start partnering and building, we know how to, what, what it is that we're trying to work around. But just get out there and just do it. So with that, thank you very much.